Hello, good morning, ladies. How are you? It is Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and I am coming live for our daily training. Today is Wednesday, so it is Mindset Day, and I've decided to talk today about finding your purpose and connecting to your intuition, because I know a lot of people I get asked all the time, like, how do I find my purpose? Or I feel like there's something more to life. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Feel free to send in your questions. I love when you send me questions because then we have more to talk about. I see that some people are watching right now. Can you please comment and like this video right now so I know that the comments are working? Good morning. Thank you for joining me. Got my tea today. My tea is Be Bold. Good morning, ladies. If you can hear me and see me, if you can just put a comment so that I know that the comments are linking. And then I'll let you know when I can see them. Hopefully they're working. So while I wait for you ladies to put your comments in, hopefully it's working or maybe you're just being shy. Um, I'll tell you quickly my morning routine because I know we started out these trainings talking about routines. And my morning routine today was gratitudes and meditation, essential oils, a hot water with lemon, and breath work and opening the door. I always try to do my breath work with fresh air. <laughs> I still can't see any comments. So either you're being shy or you're not, or the comments are not working. So let me quickly write in the comments here. Hey, ladies, um, please comment so I know the comments are working. This is just our daily routine, making sure the comments are working before we start. <laughs> oh, Facebook. Here we go. Yes. Oh, hello, Diana. I'm so happy you're here. I am jealous you're in California. It is right now I'm in Toronto and it is snowing. So, um, yeah, I'm really missing the West Coast. I actually spend a lot of time in California and Vegas. So and my boyfriend and I, he goes, as soon as this quarantine's over, we are flying to Vegas. <laughs> Warmer weather. Okay, so now that I know you're here and the comments are working, thanks, Diana. And ladies, don't be shy. Put as many comments and questions in the question box as possible. We're going to dive into purpose and intuition because I do get this question a lot. I have so many conversations with people thinking like, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to do in life? Something isn't feeling right and I'm not feeling connected. And I say this every day, but the trainings that I do all link together. So if you missed any of the past ones, go back. I like to think I'm consistent, um, but to start out this conversation, alignment is the number one. You need to know what feels good? You need to feel good. And the reason for that is it will connect you to your intuition. I believe that following your intuition and connecting to your purpose is a set of decisions that you make. You may get an intuitive urge to do something and you go do it and it leads to the next. It leads to the next. And when we get up in our head and in our own way, thinking, well, what is this one acting class going to do for me? I don't want to be an actress, but you have the urge to do that. Maybe you're going to meet someone there that's going to bring extra clarity and opportunity to your life. So the first question I have for you, and I like to give exercises in these morning trainings, is I want you to think when you have an urge to do something, whether it be to reach out to an old friend or to join a class or to try something new, do you follow that urge or do you get in your head? Okay. Do you, f have you been wanting to do something for so long, like a comedy class or an acting class or a painting class or a trip that you get in your head about and you're thinking, oh, I shouldn't do that. Or what's the point? It's not going to lead anywhere. And then you don't do it. Okay. So maybe this will take some extra reflection and or noticing this week. So this week, I want you to really notice when do you have urges to do things? Do you have urges to change something on your website or to reach out to someone? Follow those urges, do those things, follow your intuition. 
And maybe it's not your intuition. Maybe it's just a um, an old pattern or condition that you're living out, but you have to do it to try. So your homework this week, one of the things to do is paying attention to those urges and your intuitive, you know, I'm going to use the word urge again, um, those intuitive like impulses to follow through with something you want to do. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit more about intuition before I give some tips and questions to get you more connected with your purpose. The thing about intuition is I want you to question your intuition. And actually funny, I'm so happy Diana's on the, on the training this morning because Diana and I have actually personally had this conversation and we've coached on this. And that is what if your intuition isn't actually your intuition? And I see this often with clients, friends, and we have conversations that they're thinking, oh, my intuition told me to date this guy or that this job wasn't right for me. And I want you to really challenge your intuition this week also, because when you feel like you're having an intuitive moment where you're thinking, oh, this guy's not right for me, or I think I need to do this, taking action, when your intuition is very action based, I need to have this conversation with someone. I need to clarify what we are and, and, and what we, what this is. I want you before you take action in your intuition, do you see how the action piece in your intuition is a little bit different than following those little urges, just following up with someone like the other ones are just innocent. Like I'm going to try this. I'm going to do that. Follow those innocent urges and intuitive impulses. But the impulses in your intuition that are really connected to strong action, clarifying things, making you feel more safe and confident and secure, I need you to challenge those. Because oftentimes we think we're following our intuition, but we're actually following a condition and insecurity and our fear. Because your intuition and your highest self, which we've talked about so much on this training, doesn't need extra clarity. It has clarity. It doesn't need extra confidence and security and safety. So this week, exercise two is challenge your intuition. And how to do that is just ask it questions. Why am I feeling this way? What am I looking for in this action? Where did I learn this? And is there another way? Okay, I hope those que those questions just get me all jazzed. I hope you like them too. So this week, so far you have two different action steps. Number one is if you have little innocent intuitive urges, follow them, try them. You never know where they're gonna lead. They may lead you to your purpose and or a great opportunity. Number two, challenge your intuition. I want you to be very clear and ask your intuition, where is this coming from? Where did I learn this? What am I looking for? And is there another way? Okay, I hope that helps you. Are you ladies still with me? If you are, give me some comments and some likes. I like to know that you're still following and I'm still making sense and not rambling because I really like workshop and I like being able to piece it all together. So I need to know that you're following. Okay, so now we're moving on to purpose. How to connect to your purpose and know, and just get closer. This is a continuous process, but I want you to do a couple journal prompts and exercises to see how connected you are to your purpose and to bring you closer to that. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to get very clear of what you want your life to look like in an ideal world, okay? So I want you to think about money, home, relationships, uh, lifestyle, and I want you to think about what do I want my life to look like? What do I want it to feel like? And be very clear on what you want your life and lifestyle to be. This is really important so that when you're building your purpose practically and from a business sense, and you know we talked about business, yesterday we talked about business, you're aligning your purpose with your lifestyle so that you're creating something that works together. So often when we follow our purpose, whether you're an entrepreneur or an executive and or just a driven woman, 
you end up working so hard that you're living your corporate and your business and career purpose and then your life purpose is here and they're not really together. So you want to be making sure that they're aligned and you're feeling as one and you're so lucky to be doing the things that you love to do and creating the life that you want to create all in one. So everything's together. You're not wearing different hats. You're not, you know, Vanessa in business and Vanessa in life. You want to kind of be the same. You want to be you and, and everything flows in between your personal and your lifestyle goals and your career goals. Okay. The second thing I want you to, to consider is what do you love doing? What are you good at? I want you to write a list of all the things that you're good at, all the things that you love doing. This is really easy, but a lot of times we don't do it. Honestly, that's why journaling is my favorite thing. I love journal prompts and I hope these journal prompts help you because it continually asks you, is this helpful? Am I still on track? I'm always doing these exercises that I give you. It's an ongoing process. Even last night, I just did um, <laughs> journal prompts on what is my message and, and, and purpose and how do I want to connect with others? And so then I want you, so you have your list of what do I like to do? What, what am I really good at? Then I want you to write a list of what do people come to me for? This is a really good clue. Because if everyone's coming to you for advice on relationships or um, what else, or design help. So I know Diana's a designer, and so this is the this is the good thing about commenting. You get extra little, you get extra little shout out. So Diana's a designer. So if you need any interior design help, reach out to her. Um, but if people come to you for design or um, or relationship advice, write the things people ask you for. Do they ask you for family advice, money, and financial advice? What do people come to you for? This will give you clues as to what your natural brand is and what you're good at, right? So if there's a discrepancy between the two lists of what you're good at and you enjoy and what people are coming to you for, if you don't enjoy what people are coming to you for, that may be a branding disconnect and even how you show up in the world. Are you showing up as your authentic self? And that can take some additional coaching to make sure there's a link there. There should be a link there, but it's possible that there's not, and that's okay, because everything that comes up when you're doing these journal prompts and exercises is just an area and a path to go down and discover more and to problem solve and think, that's cool. You know, what is this showing me? What is this teaching me? Everything is a a fun exercise and a problem solving, right? It just have fun with it. Okay, and then the next last question with regards to purpose is what did I really enjoy as a child and maybe going into my teens? So me personally, I was always an entrepreneur. I loved creating new things. I loved problem solving. I was always some sort of leader. I love public speaking. You know when you do those cheesy public speaking competitions in school, loved them such a nerd, but I'm embracing it. I always also loved some sort of events. I was always the coordinator of all my friends to plan things and do things. I loved coordinating events and, and going to events and finding what the best events were. So I'm not surprised that now I'm really gravitating towards creating events for you ladies and creating resources for you ladies, being entrepreneurial, coaching entrepreneurs, and as well, people always came to me for advice, life advice, relationship advice, business advice. So now I'm, I'm passing that on. So what did people come to you for? What did you really love growing up? And what were you really good at? Your last exercise as we come out of purpose also connects to confidence. So when I do these little exercises and trainings every morning, nothing is ever just what it is. Nothing is ever just purpose. Do you see how intuition is coming in and confidence is coming in? Because in order for you to live your purpose, you have to be connected to the truth of who you are. And that's why that alignment exercise that we did of getting in tune with your highest self is so important because it leaks in and knowing your truth is so important, knowing your intuition, and hopefully you challenge it this week. And now confidence comes in as well, because for you to live out your purpose, you being confident in who you are and what you have to offer is really important. 
So once you've connected to your intuition, to your purpose, what you're good at, what people come to you for, I'd love you to start an evidence journal. And this evidence journal is evidence to you that you are amazing. You can start an evidence journal on manifestation. You can start an evidence journal of things that you're really good at. But this evidence journal gives you confidence to know that you are great at what you do. You are an amazing coach or trainer or um, you know executive leader. And so give yourself evidence every day that you are amazing and you are good at what you do and you are good at your purpose and the things that come naturally. If you can live a life doing things that you do naturally, you will be a very happy person. Well, it's not guaranteed. There's some things that go into that too because there's a lot of inner work, but you're closer to it and you'll have a, hopefully a little less stress but really connecting and showing yourself evidence and proof that you are awesome and it'll continue to connect you to your purpose and to the things that you're meant to do. And just in a greater perspective, we are meant to help, we are meant to serve, we are meant to share. So in your day and in your day today, think about how can I make somebody's life better? How can I share? How can I connect with somebody else? And how can I bring light to the world? Okay? So as humans, we love to share. We love to be open. I always do this. And the reason I do this, if you've come to any of my workshops or anything, I often do like this heart meditation. And I say like, put your shoulders back, open your heart, and literally picture this part opening so that you can send and give love. And so often, I'll give you a little side note here. In the book, um, in the book, the uh, what? Oh, Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. He talks about opening your heart and how often. And think about this this week. I love this concept. How often do you open and close your heart? And let me give you a little bit more context here. If something happens to us or someone treats us in a certain way, we kind of close our heart, we close up, we, we, we shut down. Every time you shut down and literally like your shoulders come in, you're trying to protect yourself at safety, it's exhausting, always closing and opening our heart based on what we're being given. So stop opening and closing your heart based on your external environment and know that you are completely safe and full and complete and strong on your own. If you keep your heart open and just be this shining beacon of light, that is so much strength. You do not need to shield and protect yourself based on what you're getting from others. Just keep your heart open and keep being that shining light. So if you see that you're shutting down or you get into a confrontation or a fight with someone, that is okay. Imagine I'm keeping my heart open. I'm, I'm giving and being love in this moment. You are a lover because you are, you love because you are a lover, not because everyone and everything is lovable, okay? So let me know if you have any questions. We are finning up, finishing up this training today. It's so fun, love this. Thank you, Mariana. And Diana had a message too that I couldn't go into when I was talking because I was too into what I was saying and I didn't want to throw myself. But Diana says these exercises have been showing me who my intuition even is and what I really want. That's awesome. Following innocent urges has led me to amazing things. Thank you for sharing that, Diana. Diana, if you're still with us, can you also share maybe something that you thought was your intuition and wasn't? So we can give some more examples. I tried to give some, you know, I see this often in relationships and women saying like, oh, this man isn't right for me. My intuition says he isn't. So I need to go over and break up with him. Uh, sometimes it's a heavy action. And if we just focus on our vibration and vibing with what is right for us, everything that is right for us will meet us and everything that isn't will go away. These intense actions don't always necessarily need to happen, but that is for a relationship chat and uh, and uh, and more training because I can go dive right into that. Lisa, thank you so much for being here. 
Ladies, is there anything else, any questions, or if you want to share something that you're going to take away from the training today, that really helps me to know what's resonating with you and what's helpful. Denise, thanks for being here. Um, oh, <laughs> thanks. You're so sweet, Denise. She says, I love how excited and happy uh, you are when talking about this. I really am. I love just, you know, spreading joy and light. It really comes from my heart. Oh, thanks, Denise. I hope you love my energy and it helps you today to start off on the right foot if you're just starting out your day. I'll wait just one more minute and see. One thing that I talked about yesterday, if you're just joining me, I actually have a super busy day today and I did yesterday too. And one of my favorite things to do and mantras to live by when I'm having a really busy day. So if you're having a busy day today, this goes out to you if you missed it yesterday. But I always say, I sit there and take a deep breath and I think, I have nothing to do today, I'm on vacation. And how does that feel? And it just feels awesome. <laughs> and so I try to just bring that energy of just being carefree and, and loving and open into all of my meetings, all of my clients today, so that I'm just showing up and I'm not coming to my activities with a, with an, a specific agenda. If I'm bringing an agenda, I get in my own way, I get in my client's way. So I just want to come to my meetings, come to my, my engagements with an open heart and show up and just be a vessel of goodness and what they need to come through me. Because everything that you're doing today is not about you. How can you allow yourself to be a vessel of goodness and love and light and clarity just to come through you because it's not about you? Lisa says, I love the idea of following those little things that draw you. Yeah, even if they seem silly or unproductive, that's awesome. Just have fun. So think about how you can have fun with the world today and, and just feel good. Your goal is to feel good and follow those little urges. So today, just to recap quick, we talked about intuition, purpose, and confidence. So if any of those things resonate with you and you're just tuning in, you can go back and uh, and listen to the training and we are coming back tomorrow tomorrow's thursday so it's relationship day so we're talking about relationships on thursday and a couple other housekeeping items we also have the online summit i got such great feedback from you ladies about the online summit we did interviews with a ton of my favorite friends celebrities influencers experts on and their success tips, relationships, health, money, business, and we dove into all of it. So there's 34 interviews in total. I'm going to put the link above. You literally get it in one shot, one email. Here are all the interviews. You can watch them whenever you want. And I know you're going to love them because I've gotten such great feedback. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Denise, Lisa, Mariana, Diana, and all of you who are watching who didn't comment, thank you for being here, sending you so much love and light. Happy Wednesday. Bye for now.